came back on a Saturday after being out of town for, for two days, and it wasn't until Sunday night when I was checking my voicemail at work that I got this really bizarre message from our new tenant. I really don't understand the sense of humor that you two have, and I don't know if your husband Josh is a drunk or if he just is a bore. And Josh was looking at me, and I looked really pale, and he said, what's wrong? And I said, I really think that we've been hacked. But it turned out what they had done was they diverted our, vo our telephone line to an out-of-state e uh, voicemail box. And anyone calling, expecting to reach us, instead heard an answering machine and a male voice pick up the phone and say, Hi, this is Josh Quintner. Uh, I'm not home right now. I'm a really horrible journalist. In fact, I suck. Uh, please leave a message. This is a New York story, a tale of hackers and what happens to people who write about hackers. A tale of teenagers and their obsession with the largest computer network in the world, the telephone system. Disrupting Quitner and Slatala's phone service was the hackers' response to their book, which claimed to depict the reality of hacker culture. The hacker scene is big in New York, big enough to have its own radio show hosted by hacker-in-chief Emmanuel Goldstein. You are listening to Off the Hook, the program about telephones, and uh, no exception today. You know what we found out? That's right, 9X has an 800 number right here in New York that you can call to check your phone bill and the phone bill of your neighbors. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is show you what happened when we tried calling this particular service and entering the phone number here at WPAI and other places. Please enter your area code and telephone number. Please hold while we check your account. Our radio show has been going for about uh, I don't know, four or five years now. Uh, we've uh, basically built up an audience talking about things like this. A lot of people don't think they're hackers, but they're interested. And so what we do is we reach out to a lot of um, a lot of regular people, or ordinary people, that just want to know how their phone works and how it can be used uh, in bad ways. Like just tonight, for instance, we talked about an 800 number anybody can call to find out the total amount of someone's phone bill, anyone's phone bill. That's something people should know about, and hackers are the people that discover it and, and discover the uh, potential abuses. Of course, we also get blamed every time something goes wrong, but uh, that's, that's part of the game. For them, the phone system is almost a, a holy grail. Back in <clears throat> the 80s, before people in this country were really on the internet the way they are now, um, before these kids really knew about the internet, um, the phone system was the most complex, most marvelous, most beautifully constructed computer system that they could imagine to traipse around in. It would be almost as if they were architecture students and they wanted to go inside the most magnificent cathedral in the world and look at what someone else had designed and built. That was how they approached the phone system. So what's up? This is Joker. We're standing outside the City Court building in New York City. Uh, it's the first Friday in the month, and it's uh, just about time for the 2600 meeting to start. I know nothing about Unix. I know about Unix. <laughs> you type SU, and then input a password. That'll get your root account. To get onto the internet from school, I, we didn't have any internet access. Only the administrators had the internet access. So what I did was I got hold of an administrator's account because they're... And then you hear these strange tones, which are actually this with a few others for international dialing. And then the operator says, this is the United States calling our region, hangs up. <laughs> and you hear dial tone. I had been assigned to do a story about hackers. I didn't know anything about hackers and barely knew what a computer was. And so I wandered over there with my reporter's notebook to see what I could see. And lo and behold, there were scores of these kids hanging around talking this language that I didn't understand. In fact, like most people, I was really intimidated. I thought that there was some horrible potential there lurking, um, that these kids were going to shut down the phone system or, or whatever. They have one? They have this thing called the but as he later found out, hackers claim their aim is to explore, not disrupt. Most of the hackers that are out there are non-destructive. They're simply out there to learn. They're you know, out for the challenge. A lot of them are 
hacking, to use the term, things other than computers. You know, things that are perfectly legal. Uh, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs were hackers. What did they uh, wind up creating? Well, Apple Computer. Uh, you know, hackers more or less created, you know, what's now the internet. I'm into communications. Um, computers got me, I mean, the reason I'm involved in computers right now is because of communications, the internet. Um, so I'm a phone person. Most of the writing about hackers was very general, um, giving you an, an idea of this frightening hacker menace that's out there and referring to the hackers only by their scary hacker handles like Acid Freak and Fiber Optic. Well, our book was an attempt to go beyond that and say, these are boys named Mark and Eli. And here is exactly what they did, sometimes in all of its boring details, sitting in their rooms for hours, typing, drinking caffeinated beverages, and eating chips. The American media criticized the book for being too sympathetic to hackers. Judging from the reaction, some of the hackers didn't see it that way. But did the Quitners deserve to have their phone hijacked? Now, I'm not saying what was done in uh, revenge was you know, correct or, or appropriate, but it's something to be expected. If you upset someone, they're obviously going to react in some manner. It's not, it's not something that difficult. Uh, it's not that difficult at all. Call the phone company say, hi, I'm Josh. <laughs> it's really, really, <laughs> that's, all that's a matter of social engineering. It's basically proving to the other person uh, who you are. I mean, that you are for real. That's what basically it is. Not. They could call up the secretary and pretend to be somebody inside there and be like, look, I'm sitting in my terminal, uh, I, I don't know what's going on, uh, you know, what do I need to type, or you know, blah, 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 blah. Nine times out of ten, if you convince them enough, they'll give you the login and the password that you need to get into the system. Having been fooled by the hackers, the New York telephone company 9X gave Josh and Michelle an unlisted number. But within three days, the hackers were back on the line. And then when we went on our book tour and we were in San Francisco one night, we tried to call home to talk to our sitter and see how everyone was. And we dialed our phone number, and instead of connecting here, we were connected to a 900 number sex line. This was a challenge the phone company couldn't ignore. They decided to rewire the house from scratch. So they put new cable and pair in, delisted us as a residence, created a phony um, company name for us and listed us as a business. Well, that worked for about two weeks. <laughs> so, but, but, you just but maybe the problem is that once you get involved in the hacker world, you have to expect to be hacked. Well, if you write a book about murderers, should you expect to be murdered? <laughs> mm, I don't think it's reasonable, but I don't particularly care. I mean, it didn't hurt us in any way. It was silly. It was sort of pranksterism. It was an annoyance. But frankly, it gave us lots of things to talk about on our book tour, you know? So if this is their idea of hurting us, hurt us some more.